Hey everyone, welcome to another video. So I'm here with Paul Skip, who is a stringing legend. You might have seen him in a couple of my previous videos. We've done a video on the basics of stringing, and we've also done a video, we did an interview about the Australian Open, didn't we? That's correct, yeah. Um, so Paul is the head stringer at Wimbledon. Uh, he's strung at the Australian Open this year, Davis Cup this year, and he's also gonna be stringing at the Fed Cup later this year as well. So he's a busy man, so it's great to have him on the channel. Uh, and today we're gonna be talking about racket customization, and we're gonna talk about some of the things that you could could consider if you were looking to customize your racket so um paul thank you for being here today no thanks ashley so first of all we're going to break customization down into two areas we're going to break it down into matching rackets and customizing rackets to suit your game style that's correct so should we talk a little bit about matching rackets first yeah sure so uh, racket matching is basically taking one racket and making sure the racket specifications or specs uh, match one another. Usually we have a target racket and one that we want to match to it. Usually it's the same racket but there may be a case where you're changing from one brand to another and you want it to feel the same. Uh, the major three specs we look at uh, is the weight of the racket, the balance of the racket and what we call swing weight or the technical term is moment of inertia. So when you talk about matching rackets, let's say I bought two rackets, whatever brand that might be, they could be different, couldn't they? Even if they're the same model, the same racket brand. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, even though the brand will actually state on there a weight and a balance, those rackets actually may not be exactly the same as what's specified. The brands do work to a certain tolerance. Uh, usually it's around about plus or minus seven grams. Uh, which can be quite a lot uh, for the weight and for the balance it's possibly around about plus or minus seven millimeters so in theory you could pick up what is specified as a 300 gram racket but you can have one which is 307 and one which is 293 and that will be acceptable for the brands um, so this is where the skill of racket matching comes into play Amazing. So I, I guess really if you're a player that is playing competitively and you do have two of the same rackets, this is something that maybe you should consider looking into. So yeah, absolutely. If you are a competitive player um, and you have two rackets of the same, they may well be different. You may notice when you're hitting that it feels different between one and the other. So my recommendation is actually if you are that keen, get them checked out, make sure they're the same so that you know you get that instance where you break a string you can just be like the pros you go you pick up your other one you can start hitting straight away uh, is it something you can do at home only if you have the right piece of equipment and they don't come cheap perfect so we're actually going to take a look at one of the pieces of equipment that you've got which helps you with matching rackets but also customizing rackets now when you're matching rackets how do you go about doing it what sort of things do you add to the racket to match them up with another one so uh, the initial thing to do is to take all the rackets that I'm given. Um, obviously you need to have at least two to start with, uh, but you can have up to six or eight, is to actually check the specs of each and every one of them. So again, we were checking the, the weight, the balance and the swing weight, marking them down, looking at your target racket. That's where we start from. And then from that position onwards, we start playing around, uh, trying to get the other five or so rackets matched to that one target racket. Once we've actually got the specs using our specialist bit of equipment, to start with, we use something called Blue Tack. Now, that's what it's called in the UK. I'm not sure how far afield we're going to go with these videos, but other companies, or I'm sorry, other countries may have a different name for it. Basically, it's just a sort of a ball of stuff that you may use to put posters up with. I think some call it White Tack, or there's something similar to it. I'm sure everyone's got it somewhere in their country. So while we use that, um, try and add in the exact amount of weight to start with and then place it around the frame to try and get the same specs once I'm happy with that I've got the specs right on those rackets. Then what I'll do is I'll make that more permanent. Uh, the material we use normally is lead tape, but we may use silicon as well. So for lead tape, um, we can get it in a quarter inch thick and uh, a half inch thick, slightly different weights and it depends where we're putting it on the frame. So if we put it on the inside of the hoop, here we're using the thinner lead and if we're putting it in the throat, we're using the thicker lead. For the handle, uh, we can use silicon, so basically just usual bathroom silicon type thing and we just basically squirt it into the handle, trying to put as much weight as we can in there as needed. Um, and then obviously every point through this process we're checking and rechecking and make sure that once we've done that everything is exactly where we want it at the end. So hopefully by the end of the process we'll have six or so rackets which are 
exactly the same. Amazing, and I think I've spotted that you've got a leather, leather grip on that racket. Does that add weight as well? Yeah, so uh, one actually quick way of adding weight to the handle, uh, if you can deal with it, is adding a leather grip. That'll add around about 12, 15 grams of additional weight on the handle. So if you're someone who actually, and there are players who don't like the silicon, because one good thing about silicon is it will dampen vibrations and make it more comfortable, but it will also remove the feel, so some players don't like that. If we put a leather grip on, it's instantly adding weight and it will change the balance and make the racket heavier straight away. Okay, so next up, we're gonna show you this piece of kit which Paul uses to measure racket specs for matching rackets. Um, he's got a racket here, which is a fresh frame, um, and he's gonna talk you through some of the things he looks at. Right, so uh, this is a racket straight off my shelf. This is the Head Extreme Auxetic uh, team. So we are looking at me meant to be approximately 275 grams. The piece of equipment here, this is called a Yonex Precision Scan, and in one easy mo motion, it will give me the weight and the balance of the racket. And then we have the ability to check the swing weight as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically, I'm just gonna put this onto the machine, just level it off there, make sure it's level and equal balance in central, and then it will do its magic. So from this, we can see that the total weight on here is it's giving me is 275.3 grams with a balance point of 329 millimeters. Uh, this racket is meant to weigh 275 and a 330 balance. So we are pretty close on here. Um, the plastic on the handle will add about two grams. So we're about one and a half grams just below what was meant to be, which is pretty good actually. The next step we do is check the swing weight. So we do it using this piece of the machine and basically we just hold it. And it gives us a swing weight number of 272. And you can see here it says kg per centimeter squared but basically we just refer to that as just being 272 or 272 points, something like that, we, just for ease of use. Uh, so what we would then do is, if you want to match this to another one, we'll just grab the second racket, do exactly the same, compare the specs, and then we work out where we're going to add our weight to make them the same. Amazing, so obviously people at home are not going to have this kit, so is there a way people can measure the weight and the balance of their rackets at home? So the easiest way forward is to get a set of scales, something like, uh, you can do it with kitchen scales, but try and get one which has got at least a tenth of a, a gram, so that's quite good. Uh, for balance, that's a little bit tricky. You can basically just use like a, a pencil or something like that and just move it until the actual head of the racket just tips and that's where your balance point will be. Or you could actually just do it off the edge of a table. Um, so just put it on the edge of the table, push it until it starts to move and then you can mark on there where the balance point is. And is that measured from the, the butt cap upwards? Or? Yeah. yeah, so the balance point is always measured from the butt cap going towards the frame. So basically, the closer the butt cap is, uh, sorry, the balance point is to the butt cap, then the more head light the racket is. And obviously, if it's more towards the head, then the more head heavy it is. An even balance of a racket, so a racket is 27 inches long, so an even balance is about 13 and a half inches. But all these measurements are done unstrung. And the reason why we do this unstrung is because different strings will weigh different amounts. And if you put grips and etc. on there as well, that will change the balance as well. So ideally, no grip, no strings. If you have to check with strings and grip, at least remove the over grip. With the strings, if the racket has the same strings in it, you're gonna be okay in getting a, a a comparable figure. Perfect, so that was racket matching. Now we're gonna talk about how you can customize your racket if you wanted to add some weight to it to gain some different things in your game, depending on your game style. So, Paul, did you want to kind of fire away? 
Yeah, sure. So, other than racket match, which is just basically making two rackets or more than two rackets exactly the same, the next step of customization is actually customizing the racket to actually suit your game or trying to help you improve your game or trying to give you something that the racket may not quite do for you. So, this could be you want a little bit more stability in the frame or you just want to make the racket overall just swing a little bit heavier or even just heavier overall. Um, we can look at your game and then obviously you can try and adjust exactly where you want that weight to be. Now where we put the weight will actually affect how the racket plays. So we call this bit, this is 12 o'clock, uh, if we put the smallest amount of weight, so roughly a gr one gram here, it will change the spring weight by about three points. So a very very small amount of weight at the end there will make the biggest difference to the swing weight, a bit like a hammer, all the weight with a hammer is at the end. Uh, the next sort of usual position is here and here which is the 10 and 2 position. If we put a bit of weight here it helps move the sweet spot a little bit further up the frame but still helps with stability. So if you're someone who hits a little bit nearer to the top of the frame maybe moving, helping to move that sweet spot to where you're hitting the ball will actually benefit you the most. One thing, can I, I'm just jump in because you told me a really cool tip which I hadn't considered before um, about how to tell where your sweet spot is on your racket so you know we're fortunate enough to have you know sensors in rackets now but um, there was a very basic way that you could tell where your sweet spot was. Yeah so what you can do is you can get some stencil link from your stringer or uh, a marker pen something like that mark the whole of the string bed so let's say if you've got uh, black stencil ink or red it actually is almost probably better stencil the whole of the racket put the ink all over it the actual strings that is not the actual frame and then when you start hitting it it will wear away where you hit it and that will show you where you're hitting most consistently that will also help where you put the weight because if again if you're showing that you're hitting more up here we can add more weight to here and here and that will make it more beneficial for you uh, the next most popular place is three and nine so here and here um, if we put weight here, that actually adds stability to the frame. So normally, you know, if you're hitting a volley and maybe it twists sometimes, or you're playing against heavy hitter people uh, and you find your racket twists or you can't control it, a bit of extra weight here can help with stability. But also because most people are hitting the ball roughly here, by adding the weight there, you may actually find you get a bit of a stronger shot or a, a more pop because you've got extra weight going through that hitting zone. So that's another interesting place to put it as well. As we move down the frame, uh, if we put it here in the throat area, now the balance point for most rackets is in here. So if you just want to make the racket heavy without actually changing too much else about it, the weight can go here over the balance point and that makes it a little bit easier. So it keeps the balance point virtually the same. Swing weight may go up a little bit, but not too much. And obviously the weight will actually mean it's heavier as well. And then finally, normally it's gonna be down in the handle. Now actually, contrary or conversely to weight up here, if we put weight down here, it won't actually affect the racket that much. It will make the racket more head light, but you won't actually feel the weight in the handle so if you're putting five grams or so in the handle then basically you will notice the effects of it you won't actually notice the weight perfect so if the viewers were looking to add some weight to their racket would you suggest doing it in small increments to start off with yeah definitely you don't want to make big changes uh, because you never know how much of that change whether it's going to be too little or too much um, there always seems to be people who will refer to putting weight at the tip straight away whereas I'd actually recommend not doing that because it is potentially such a dramatic change to start with. If you just want to make the racket heavier then the easiest place is actually in the balance point. Now what you could also do is basically take the same amount of weight and, and put it at the tip and put it in the handle. That will keep the balance the same, the weight will go up but the swing weight will also go up as well. Um, I think for most people, to start with, you're looking really, for most people, it's going to be torsional stability, maybe a little bit extra weight going through the ball. Really look at the three and nine position. One other consideration you may have is, as you add weight on that, that obviously the racket is going to become more head heavy. So you may want to what we call counterbalance it. So if you put some weight here, you need to put some weight here as well if you want to try and maintain the balance. But again, that's something you're going to have to try. But you're quite right, Ashley. Small steps to start with. So if you do want to go to the top, 
one, two grams most. If you're going here, you could probably go three to four grams. And if you just want to make the racket heavier, a bit more head light, then you know, five grams or so here as well. So massive thank you as always, Paul, for having you on the channel. Um, you've been on the channel a couple of times now. People have had some amazing feedback uh, for you. So hopefully you'll be on again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you guys have any questions for Paul or me, um, or you'd like to see us cover a certain topic, let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.